Professor Michael Simpson has been Health 24's cyber shrink for about the past 15 years. He's joining me in studio today to tell me about being a psychiatrist online. Hello. Hello. Now you have a very interesting job, don't you? That's one of the reasons why I'm still doing it. It's fascinating because on the one hand you're making a very close contact with people who are a long way away. Um, and yet they can be completely anonymous and completely protected, so they can be frank, and so can I. And that makes it really intriguing. Talk me through a regular interaction you might have with someone. The basic format is someone posts a question online, which may be absolutely anything, within the Health24 right. forum. And then I respond to it. But what is, I think, also nice is we have, it's open to other regular forum members to come in and comment as well. So often it's convincing to someone that ordinary people not only come up with new ideas to help sort out a problem, but it also is convincing that other people agree with mm. the approach that's suggested mm. or uh, other ways of dealing with the, the, the issues they run into. Sometimes I think we're doing a great deal of help in getting people to see the components or the shape of their problem and how it could be helped but they need the extra help from a psychologist in terms of talking therapy or from a psychiatrist in terms of medication. So they can't fix it all online? Sometimes I'm surprised how mm -hmm. far we get, but the aim isn't to say, come to us and we'll fix everything right. overnight. Um, that would be real quackery, and I don't even do unreal quackery. What are some of the most common questions South Africans are asking you? The commonest question I get is, am I being unreasonable? They tell you a story of what's been happening and say, am I being unreasonable? And in my experience, unreasonable people never ask that question. <laughs> it's a dead giveaway. Every time somebody asks that, they're actually people who've put up with a heck of a lot for a long time. And they're just at the point of saying, I can't take this any longer. It's got to change. And they say, am I? But they're still seeing that it's their fault mm. that their husband drinks all day or, or throws things at the children as if they were in complete control of the whole world and everything is their fault. And if you can even start breaking that habit of thinking, which is one of the very important things that shrinks have to do, is to help people see that the way they look at, the way they perceive and understand their problem may not be accurate and is usually not being helpful, or it would already work. What are some, some common areas you think we should be looking at? There are two massive areas of prejudice and, well, South Africa is good at prejudice, let's face it, it's a national skill we have. If it was in the Olympics, we could probably get gold or at least silver. But mental health, we are prejudiced against. In uh, medical aids, it's, I think, disgraceful that if you uh, have a mental ill, you may have the same symptoms, the same actual illness, but if it's seen as a mental illness, you've got 20 days of therapy and out of that, best of luck. Or if it's, but it's a physical illness, then they can treat you for months and months. There's no limit. Why are we saying this type of illness we will support and assist that one not much? In terms of government policy, I remember having contributed to the formation of the, the ANC health policy. There was always the underpinning that it was going to be treating all forms of illness equally. But if, yes, it may be very hard to get treated for very simple physical illnesses, but for mental illnesses in large areas of the country, there's nothing. Mm. Or you join a queue that lasts for months and months. So across the board, we discriminate against people with any form of mental illness 